Every week we perform hundreds of different tasks in our laboratories. This work is performed at different workstations, using different instruments and materials, and employing different movements. As a result, each task makes a different set of demands on our bodies. If we aren't careful, some of them can lead to unhealthy stress or strain. The science of ergonomics helps us to take a look at these situations and determine what we need to do to avoid any harmful effects. It does this by examining our job, work area, instruments, and tools. Ergonomics shows us how to adapt what we do to our own physical makeup so we can work effectively and, most importantly, safely. Are you short or tall? Do you have long legs? What about your arms? Physical size and shape are important considerations when designing work areas and equipment. To work safely, we need to minimize the amount of stress we place on our bodies. The design engineers who develop workstations and other lab equipment try to make them work well for everyone. Since this is pretty much impossible, they do their best to come close by designing them to fit most people. Everything, bring everything together. Customizing your work so area so that it works best for you becomes a job for you and your supervisor. How closely you match up with your workplace will determine how hard your muscles and joints will be asked to work while you're on the job. To start, think about arranging your instruments and materials so you're not forced to make unhealthy movements such as overstretching. You also want to avoid long sessions of repetitive motion without rest, irregular and extreme positions, overly heavy loads, and using the wrong tool for the job. These are the main contributors to ergonomic health problems. Practicing positive work techniques whenever possible is one thing that can help us with these problems. This includes performing stretching exercises to relieve muscle tension and doing our best to keep our bodies in neutral, non-stressful positions. Neutral positions put the least stress possible on our body. Each major joint and muscle group has its own neutral position. We'll start with the wrist. Keep your wrist straight, as if you're about to shake hands with someone. This position creates the least amount of stress, and you should use it whenever possible. You'll find that other wrist positions are significantly more stressful, especially when they're used over long periods of time. There's also a neutral position to help your arms and shoulders. If you're working at a lab bench, try to keep your upper arms to the side and your forearms at 90 degree angles. This puts the least amount of stress on these joints and muscles. It may not seem like there are many opportunities to use neutral positions, but in reality, there are a lot. Paying attention to workstation height is one of the keys. You need to fine-tune your workstation to fit your physical characteristics. Keep your work surfaces at a height that makes it easy to maintain neutral arm positioning. You may need to raise or lower your chair to get the best position possible. If you're standing and need to get higher, use a small step stool or platform or see if you can lower the work surface. As we've said, careful positioning of your tools and materials is important to good ergonomic health as well. Keep them in front of your body as much as possible. This will encourage neutral movements. Never put supplies where you have to stretch to reach them, especially if you need to support yourself with one hand to grab your materials with the other. Avoid other stretching and twisting movements, and don't put yourself in cramped positions that will prevent your body from moving efficiently. Another ergonomic problem involves repetition, such as extending your arms in the same way over and over again for long periods of time. Repetition can lead to fatigue, which is a signal that your body needs some relief. To guard against this, vary your work patterns when you can, 
and take periodic mini breaks to loosen tight muscles. Never use excessive force to perform a task. Applying a lot of pressure to any part of your body can lead to an injury, especially if you're not in a neutral position. Much of the lab work we perform is done with gloves. Choosing a pair with the right fit is essential to ergonomic safety. Gloves that are too large or too thick force you to grip objects tightly, which can lead to painful swelling of your tendons. Gloves that are too tight or are stiff at the wrist can press on nerves, blood vessels, and the carpal tunnel, again leading to serious injuries. So make sure you select gloves that are comfortable and that fit you well for the work you're performing. There are also ergonomic issues involving your eyes. For instance, working for long hours at a microscope or computer can lead to an uncomfortable case of eye strain. To avoid this, take a comfort break. Close your eyes and rest them for a minute. One technique is to cover them with the palms of your hands. Do this periodically to keep your eyes feeling fresh. An exercise called refocusing can often help as well. Move your eyes away from your equipment to something more distant, like a point outside your window or across the lab. Stay focused on this point for 60 to 90 seconds. Both of these practices allow your eye muscles to relax back to a more normal state before you return to the close-in focus of your work. Your back and neck are especially vulnerable to ergonomic problems. You need to consider them both when working in the lab. Stress to either can lead to painful injuries. Your back can be weakened in many ways through improper lifting, a fall, even bad posture. As with the rest of your body, you also need to keep your back and neck in a neutral straight position. That means no unusual bending or twisting. Believe it or not, sitting is one of the most stressful positions for your back. Remember to sit so that your lower back, its lumbar region, is comfortably supported by the padding of your chair. Keep both feet flat on the floor, knees slightly higher than your hips. This position places the least stress on your back. To get the best lumbar support, you may need to adjust your chair or place a pillow or rolled up towel behind your back. If your feet tend to dangle, you should rest them on a book or platform. While they're better than they used to be, many lab stools still lack good lumbar support. Here, shifting your hips forward will help to keep you from hunching over. Again, a towel or pillow may be helpful too. Use the stool's rails as foot rests and take frequent stretches to loosen up tight muscles. Standing can be just as tiring to your back as it is to your feet and legs. Again, organize your tools and materials ahead of time so that everything's well within reach. Avoid bending and stooping. Keep comfort in mind when you're standing for long periods of time. Shift your weight from one foot to the other. Using a foot rest to keep one foot higher than the other can also help to take some of the load off your back. Wear comfortable shoes with cushioned insoles and stand on cushioned anti-fatigue mats if they're available you'll be amazed at how much difference these types of things can make. Proper lifting techniques are essential to the health of your back and neck. Before lifting an object, examine it to make sure you're not biting off more than you can chew. If you can safely lift the object yourself, first get close to it. Keeping your back straight, bend slowly at the knees. Don't bend at the waist. Get a good grip on the sides of the object. Lift slowly with your legs, keeping your back straight and balancing the load on your chest. When walking with an object, remember not to twist your back. Turn with your feet instead and always keep the object close to you. This also helps to reduce the strain on your back. To set the object down, simply follow the rules in reverse. 
Keep your back straight, bend with your knees, and set the object down carefully. If something's too heavy or awkward to handle, don't risk an injury. Get help. Lift the object together. Counting out loud is often helpful. If there's no one around to help or the load is too heavy for two people to carry, get a cart or dolly. Exercise can be a big help in avoiding ergonomic injuries. A regular exercise regimen will keep your body in good condition and enable your muscles to do what you ask of them. It's also a good idea to start your day off with some warm-up stretches. And remember to do a few limbering exercises during your breaks. They should easily fit into your work schedule and help keep you comfortable throughout the day. You can help to eliminate ergonomic aches and pains by paying attention to your body mechanics and your work environment. Let's review. Arrange your materials so that they're within easy reach. Raise or lower work surfaces and position chairs and stools so that you can use neutral positions. Avoid repetitive motions and take short breaks throughout the day. Make sure that you have good lumbar support when you're sitting. Practice good lifting habits. Lift with your legs, not with your back. And get plenty of exercise. It's easy to work ergonomically. Just follow the rules and use common sense. And you'll go home feeling great every day.